Hi, welcome to Unlock Layout and Design and today we are going to discuss about CMOS fabrication and this is part one of a lengthy lecture. Let us look into the uh, contents of the CMOS fabrication process. So first we must understand that the entire uh, IC fabrication whatever we are doing, we are doing on a silicon wafer. So first we should understand how the wafer is formed. So for that we will understand like what is the crystal lattice, what is the difference between monocrystalline and polycrystalline silicon and how the ingot is formed and how a wafer is arrived after cutting off the ingot. Okay, That is the first part of the discussion. After that we will be discussing about photolithography, then how do we add uh, layers, then changing the composition, removing the layers and thermal treatment all in detail. So we or now are looking into how to manufacture silicon wafers. So silicon wafers are made out of silicon which is second most abundantly available element in earth's crust. But then that silicon is not available in the form of silicon itself. It is available in the form of silicon dioxide which is called as silica and some compounds which are called as silicates. So how do I obtain pure silicon from this? So this reaction actually will show you how the silicon is obtained by what is known as the refinement process. So when I use carbon and uh, react it with uh, silicon dioxide at 1900 degree centigrade, I will get silicon and also carbon monoxide. Okay. So then this silicon is not uniform structure. So what do you mean by this structure? We will look into that one. A crystal lattice describes the arrangement of atoms in three dimensions. As you see, a unit crystal of silicon has got 18 atoms as shown in this diagram. Okay. So based on the arrangement of this crystal lattice, there are three different dimensions. As you see here, the, depending on the arrangement, it is either 100 uh, the orientation or 110 orientation or 111 orientation. You can see this is the front face or it's the diagonal face or it's from bottom to top like a triangular face. The crystal structure and this symmetry, right, it plays a critical role in determining many physical properties, okay, such as cleavage for diffusion and ion implantation, whether it's easy or difficult to do that one. And electronic band structure, this will add, tell about the mobility. So MOSFET majority circuits are commonly developed in 100 plane. So majority of the CMOS uh, uh, wafers are actually uh, manufactured in the 100 plane. Whereas the BJRT majority circuits, they are always uh, made out of 111 plane, mainly because they need a high tensile strength because of higher heating and annealage properties. So what we need is a monocrystalline silicon wafer. So for that what we do is we will actually take a quartz furnace. So why do we take quartz? Quartz can withstand very high temperatures. So we take a quartz furnace in that what we do is the polysilicon pieces they are they're all inside this and we will heat it at 1425 degrees centigrade and it starts melting and then what we do is we do the doping. So okay. So we add the dopants. If I want a P minus P plus uh, uh, wafer, so then what I do is I add P plus impurity into this, and that's how I do the doping. Then what I do is I'll introduce a seed crystal. Okay. So I want this entire thing to grow in the orientation of 100 crystal lattice. Okay. We discussed it just below. For CMOS, I need 100 crystal lattice. So I will introduce a seed at the tip of this rotating shaft <coughs> so with the orientation 100 then what i do is i'll make this tip touch this molten material and then i'll start moving it above i'll move it, move it pull it upward and then what happens is this will get a shape like this and the crystal starts forming and i'll start pulling the crystal upward and then finally what i get is a silicon ingot of this with some residual crystal uh, melted silicon in the crucible okay, or in the furnace. 
This method of uh, forming the silicon ingot is called as a CZ process. So now if you see in this, this is the ingot, this entire thing. So now this one is actually, uh, what they do is they take a diamond blade or a saw and then cut them into what is known as the vapors like this. So there are many vapors like this. Okay. And then the rough edges are removed by polishing the surface. And currently the kind of vapors that are used is like the size of the vapor is like 8 inch or 12 inch. So the thickness would be around 725 micrometer to 775 micrometer and this orientation is the 100 orientation and this is the uh, primary flat what you see here actually defines the orientation of the crystal cube okay so now we understood the dimensions of the wafer so these are the different uh, sizes of a wafer right so these round ones so it can be like 4 inch or 5 inch 6 inch 8 inch and 12 inch so at 8 inch 10 inch they are like quite common now so in that we put all my all the circuitry right so if you see this is the design that we do and that design is um, uh, uh, fabricated on this uh, wafer many times right so so many such instances are there so they are called as dice die okay each one is a die that is our design so based on the size of the die so we get so many dice per wafer die per wafer means it depends upon our design suppose say i have 1 mm so i have 1 mm by 1 mm so then i will have so many dice say assume the 100 so if i have like 2 mm by 2 mm so it will be much much lesser So here we have a diagram, here we have a diagram of the CMOS inverter. So this is the front view, this is the top view and this is the isometric view or the 3D view. As you see in the wafer we do lot of modifications. One is we put a N well, then we put a poly, we put a metal and we put silicon dioxide. So lot of changes have to be done. Okay. So each of them basically boils down to few things. So the basic steps of uh, CMOS fabrication actually uh, involves patterning uh, using photolithography. So photolithography step uh, actually makes use of some stencils which are actually sensitive to light. We are using that we do some patterning. For, for example, if I want a gate in a particular area, I will use a stencil kind of thing and make gate only in that area. Okay. So I will uh, grow the gate only in that area. So that kind of stencils is known, in, known as the patterning and that uses photolithography. So that is one step. Then one, one other um, step is like adding layers. So we will either be doing adding a lot of layers using different techniques we will add layers. We may even change the composition. For example, the uh, substrate was P minus. We make a N well out of it. So we will do some ion implantation diffusion kind of activities to change the composition. Then we will also remove layers, which is known as etching. And then we will also do some tra thermal treatment like annealing and alloying. Okay. So basically, if you see, these are the uh, steps involved in fabricating the CMOS. Uh, circuit actually so that is nothing but patterning using photolithography adding layers changing the composition removing layers and thermal treatment we'll go through all of them in detail so let's try to understand what is a photoresist a photoresist is a material this photoresist is a material which when exposed to light will change its property okay so in that there are two types of photoresist one is the positive photoresist Another one is the negative photoresist. In a positive photoresist, for example, we see here, this one is the photoresist material. So this dark pink color uh, material is nothing but the photoresist material. And if you see here, I have a glass here, a glass, and this portion uh, will not allow the periphery portion in the format of the inverted U that portion will not allow the light to pass whereas the center cut whatever is there in this region light can pass through okay ultraviolet light can pass through so when the light passes through only this portion 
is like exposed to light and this portion is not exposed to light the outer region is not exposed to light so when it gets exposed to light it becomes photosoluble okay then it can be removed so now this portion i removed it and now i got a photoresist devel uh, deposited only on the periphery in the form of the inverted u as you can see here as you can see here it is a inverted u so now i patterned this photoresist using the process known as photolithography using light and the stencil whatever you call the glass and stencil with some selectively i exposed the uh, material for to light i made use of photolithography process to pattern the photoresist in this uh, example it, it, using photolithography you can do patterning of many things you can do patterning of metals you can do patterning of uh, ion implantation you can do a lot of things so photolithography is common uh, patterning using photolithography it, it uses some masks to do, do that whereas a negative photoresist is where <coughs> the just opposite of that here you see the center portion is not getting exposed okay it is not getting exposed to light and that one becomes photosoluble uh, that can be removed okay here it's not getting exposed to light okay and that becomes soft and the one which gets exposed will become hard and it will remain okay. so that is negative photoresist so we understood what is positive photoresist negative photoresist and what is photolithography and what is pattern so what do you mean by deposition deposition is a ma method to add layers it's a technique of adding layers wherein you grow a epitaxial layer okay deposition you just deposit a monocrystalline film on a monocrystalline substrate so if you see here this portion is the substrate on that i deposit what is known as the monocrystalline film using this deposition process and the layer that gets formed like that is called as the epi layer so we know that monocrystalline uh, film when it has to be there must be a seed uh, crystal and this substrate itself will act like the seed crystal so that the crystal lattice is maintained another way of adding a layer is deposition so there is something known as the chemical wafer deposition to grow a silicon layer on silicon substrate okay so what they do is silicon chloride a gas uh, in the inlet will cool down uh, which will actually get heated and a thin film will get deposited on the wafer and this is the gas exhaust this is more suitable increasing the resistivity of the region okay or to reverse dope the substrate this is called as cvd which is uh, important uh, technique uh, of deposition it uses very high temperature another variant of uh, chemical vapor deposition or the cvd process is the plasma enhanced cvd process so here in between the two electrodes we have plasma so how this plasma is formed is by using a radio frequency source uh, or a direct current discharge so by using the plasma enhanced cvd the operating temperature comes down drastically and there is a faster deposition rate and a good film quality is also obtained and this is very suitable for deposition and etching so they do plasma etching as well as plasma uh, enhanced cvd as well okay one more way of adding layer is the oxidation process for example if i have to develop sio2 layer or the insulator layer on top of the silicon wafer so what do i do is i use what is known as the oxidation so here as you see these are all the wafers the red ones are all wafers put up vertically and there is a gas inlet and there is a gas outlet so and this one is a quartz tube which has which can withstand very high temperature what they basically do is to oxidize it uh, using oxygen gas at higher temperature so it uh, oxidizes the silicon wafer into silicon dioxide another way of adding layer is sputtering this process uses ions of an inert gas like argon to dislodge atoms from the surface of the crystalline material the atoms are then being electrically deposited on the surface of the 
substrate. So we use magnetic field to steer the direction of atom deposition. Okay, this has got very good uh, use for on chip interconnects or the metal one, metal two, whatever is there. All those things get formed by using a technique called addition of layer. That uh, technique is called as sputtering. So another way of adding a layer is spin coating. So what they do is the coating material is like applied at the center of the wafer okay on this wafer so this blue one is the wafer and this red thing what you see here is the uh, material which needs to be coated on this wafer so they put a small amount of that then what they do is they rotate this uh, wafer at a very high speed and because of the centrifugal force this entire material which is at the center will get deposited on the entire wafer okay so generally a su8 is a commonly used epoxy based 90 photo resist so this is coated on the paper using this spin coating method. Okay, so today we discussed about SEMA silicon manufacturing and photolithography and patterning and then addition of layers using deposition and oxidation, sputtering and spin coating. So the other uh, contents will be in the following video wherein how do we change the composition, how do we remove the layers and thermal treatment. So thanks for watching, please uh, hit the like button once you like the re, uh, video and do not forget to share and subscribe, thank you.